welcome everyone. We're so grateful that you're all here with us tonight. And tonight we have the honor to have with us TAM member Katie Donovan. After experiencing the addiction journey with her daughter, Katie left her marketing career in order to focus on her family's recovery. She has now dedicated her life to those that are affected by substance use disorder, coaching families through the chaos of their loved one's addiction, and is also a sought-out expert for stigma reduction training to law enforcement, first responders, hospitals, and workplace wellness. Katie is a family, life, and relationship coach, speaker, and writer with a passion for empowering women. She has been interviewed on ABC, NBC, Fox Sports, and featured in Time and Money magazine cover stories. Katie's award-winning blog reached over a million views and seen in 146 countries within 30 days of its inception and has been syndicated in over 30 publications, including USA Today and Babbel by Disney. Katie, we welcome you and we thank you for your time tonight. And with that, I'm going to turn the mic over to you and we are excited to hear what you have to share with us. The floor is yours. I'll be recorded. Share because I want, I really want us to be um, open and engaged in talking back and forth because that's what it's about. It's communication and support with each other. It's not about none of us needs to be told what to do. And, and I certainly would never do that. But what I want to say is that um, Tam was actually the first support group that I really uh, joined and found my piece. It was Tam. For a long time, uh, people would tell me, Katie, you really have need some support. You got to go to a support group. In the beginning, I thought, um, I'm not the one with the problem, right? I'm sure we've all thought that a time or two. And then, and then maybe we all came to that place where you think, well, I can't do this. I don't know what the heck to do. And I'm drowning. And I had my moment, right? And I'm sure all of you have had that that moment that you that maybe you won't forget. And so I did look up a support group in my local community and I promised my husband that I would go. And I got in the car and and I drove there shaking the whole time, right? My hands were shaking, thinking, I can't believe I'm actually doing this right now. And I pulled into the parking lot. It was in the basement of a church. And I pulled in the parking lot. And I sat in my car for the entire hour. And I cried my eyes out. And I never went in. And I drove home. And then my husband asked me, how did it go? And I said, it was wonderful. I totally lied. <laughs> because I was so, uh, so many different emotions, right? I was embarrassed that I didn't have the strength to go in. I wanted him to be proud of me. But yet at that moment in my own life, for me, walking in almost felt like a failure. Like I, I failed as a parent. I failed as a wife. I failed in, in a hundred different ways. And why did I need this help? Of course, I'm type A, and I think I I want to take care of it all myself and and take on that responsibility, right? And and probably many of you here can identify with that because we're here and we're the moms and we're the fixers and we're the appointment makers and the Christmas dinner makers, right? So I think um, you can probably connect with that and understand. So. I share that because then I found Tam and I was able to kind of quietly stalk and, and, and read. For me, that was what I needed to get to the point to be able to walk in and actually show up to, to a place where I felt like I wouldn't be judged. And this gave me that, that place. So I thank you uh, for, for Barbara for creating this and, and, Sue and all of the wonderful admins um, for continuing this mission for so many other moms like us, because it is us and we're a team 
together and we're all in different phases in this. And that's where I want to go with this for the holidays because, you know, sometimes the holidays in itself is stressful, right? It can be wonderful and joyful and, and, but it's also shopping and fighting the crowds. And, you know, I think I got grocery cart rage in, in, the Kroger grocery store the other day, like, oh my gosh, get out of my cable soup aisle. I need a lady with the hundred coupons, which I love couponing, but we it can be overwhelming. And then we add in we add in an, a, a medical illness that can be so devastating. It adds a whole new level of concern and and really can be an agonizing experience so we're all on different phases in our journeys in this and what may be comfortable for one may not be comfortable to another and that's okay that's okay you do what you feel is best with the knowledge that you have at that time but I understand that as we're making these plans, and it might be you, you know, with your immediate family at home because of COVID, or, or maybe you are going to be traveling. There's no judgment here. I don't really care, right? But there's 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 planning involved, no matter what, no matter what you're doing. But sometimes if our loved ones are are either in active addiction or or newly in, in on their journey in into recovery. Sometimes we're waiting for that bomb to go off, right? And and as we're wrapping presents and we're trying to be festive, and maybe you're forcing yourself to put on that Christmas music, but you're just totally not feeling it. And and your mind is water, wandering of what do we do? And are, are they okay? And are they hungry? Are, and are, are they are they on the streets? Are they are they are they alive? I haven't heard from them in in weeks. And and or I have, have heard from them, they really want to come home and I don't know what to do because I think they might be on something and I don't know what shape that they're going to be in on that day. And, and all of that is exhausting and, and juggling it all it can really, truly feel like you're being pulled in every single direction. And I know your mind will go then to if we do welcome them home what if they show up high on something or, or what if they don't show up and and we've made these plans you have to do what's right for you and if you say yes it's the family's comfort level because you really do have to take their feelings into consideration at times too not a yes or a no, but take it into consideration. Having those open and honest communication, that's what's needed. Listen, listen, Johnny. We love you and we want you here so bad because we miss you so much. But here's what I'm comfortable with. And my comfort level is XYZ. And that's okay. But you're saying it in a way that is loving and you're saying it in a way that I miss you and I love you and I want to see you. But it, it maybe it can't be if you're if you're actively using at that time. But keep in mind, sometimes with opiates, they may have to use a bit to, to just be normal, to not be in pain, to not be sick that there might be something there. It's not about drug testing that day and you're busted that day. It's a day of embracing them and loving them for who they are at that time. You know, I'm gonna get emotional in a minute because I get it. Mm. And there has been holidays where I've had to uh, give my daughter Narcan. And then there's been holidays where dinner was at five o'clock and she didn't show. And then there's been beautiful holidays with beautiful memories where everyone is clean and happy and, and 
we're focused on the moment. And what I've learned over the years is that is what you need to do. You focus on that moment, whether they're there or they're not, you focus on the people that are surrounding you. Whether it's your granddaughter or your niece that's in the tutu and prancing around in joy, you embrace that. You embrace that and you love that because the rest of it we can't control. But you can control what's around you at that moment. And if dinner's at five o'clock, you eat dinner at five o'clock. You don't wait till 5.30, six, and put everyone else in jeopardy. Dinner's at five. And then if they come late, don't lecture. Hey, Johnny, I'm so happy to see you. I can eat a plate of food for you. Is that okay? It doesn't have to be focused on their addiction that day. It doesn't have to be the questions of and the lectures of you were here and we said it was this time. Christmas is a time of embracing joy. It's not the time to worry about the future. And it's not the time to bring up the past. And really, honestly, it's never a time to focus on those things either. But truly on this day, don't use addiction as an excuse for our own behaviors. And our own behaviors can be toxic. And I say that as an honest mom, because I remember shaking as doing the dishes and being so angry that I thought she said she would come and she didn't come or she kept saying, I'll be here at two. And then it was three o'clock and another message came and I'll be there in a little bit. And it was over and over and over again. And I had these visions in my head of what it was supposed to be like. And honestly, does it matter? Does it really matter? It's a day. It's a day that we sometimes put these expectations on, but that's on ourselves. Don't let the addiction take you hostage. It will only do that if you allow it. For ideas, I get this question a lot. What do I get my son or my daughter for Christmas? Um, you know, either they're in, they're in treatment or they're early sobriety or, or maybe they are um, still struggling. And the biggest thing you can do is the gift of love and the gift of listening and the gift of no judgment. And it's hard to say and really, really do, right? Like super hard. But it's okay to love. It's okay to just really listen without trying to say you need to do this and you need to do that because we have to stay out of their recovery. That's their business, not ours. Our business is to be moms. And our mom's job is to care, and it's not to go to caretaking. And so ideas can be something very simple, even a journal, um, maybe a date together of, get, of, of going away, or, or even just a lunch, right? Um, or a day of, of shopping if they need something. Yes, gift cards are okay. They can sell them. Yes, but also knowing that that potentially Whatever gift you get, knowing what potentially could happen with it, what are you okay with? Knowing that that could happen. And, and it's not right or wrong. It's just more of accepting it, accepting what could happen. If they do come and some people will say, I don't know what to do. My family's going to be here and grandma's here. I'd like to be a harder person. And... If that's what you feel you need to do, that's okay. Put all the coats and the purses in an open room where everything is visible. You're protecting everyone else. It doesn't have to be this big announcement. You're also protecting your loved one too, right? And again, if they're late for dinner, just continue on as planned. It's okay. But the biggest thing that When they, if they do come or when they do come, 
knowing it's very uncomfortable for them sometimes because they know they know maybe they haven't been there for the past two Christmases or or what has gone on the past six months or a year. They know that family has probably talked about this and it's hard for them. It's very challenging. They feel sometimes everyone's staring at me or everyone's gonna be checking me out and everyone's gonna be judging me. They feel out of place. And it, maybe there's cousins there that they haven't seen in a long time and they even feel uncomfortable like, dude, hey, what you been up to? And, and how do they reply to that? It's uncomfortable for them too. They don't want to be the focus. They just want to go and blend in and enjoy the family also that they haven't seen in a long time. So keeping that in mind to be compassionate and completely focusing on truly embracing today, not our addicted loved ones or not that they're struggling or whatever the substance is. Focus on the love, truly on the love. Some people have asked me, well, do we have alcohol there? Or I don't want to go if, if, if you know, grandma's going to be having alcohol present or, or whomever, you know, talk to them about it. Talk to your loved one about it. Be honest and open and communicate that. You know, um, I come from a, an Irish Catholic family. And I and then I married an Irishman. My brother has struggled with alcohol almost his entire life. And he is also bipolar. And he has been in recovery of, from alcohol for many years now. But in the beginning, I was the one that was hosting Christmas. And I sent a message out to all of our family members. And I said, we're not going to have, this is years ago. I said, I'm, we're not going to have alcohol. We're going to respect my, my brother, Danny. And everyone was totally fine with that. But what I didn't do was give my own brother the dignity of even having that discussion with him. And when he got to Christmas, he actually did notice that no one was drinking. And it's not like we're all, you know, oh, I have control. It's there's many of us that right, we can have that social glass of wine or cocktail or whatever. And it actually made him more uncomfortable that we weren't because he felt then that the focus was on him and he didn't want that. He said it would make him more comfortable if we were just being ourselves. Meaning if someone wanted to have a glass of wine, big deal. And he said, there's alcohol everywhere, Katie. And I appreciate you doing that. But that means I'm the focus and it makes me embarrassed. And I understood that and I was glad that he told me that. And I should have talked to him about that years ago. And so we do now. Loving our entire family with this, it, it, it is really a hard road. But being able to embrace them for who they are at that moment in their lives, whether they are struggling at that moment or not, you're loving your child, period. And that's never a bad thing. Uh, it's 8.49, I didn't want to really talk too, too much more because I could truly go on in detail about so many of these things for forever. Uh, Terry, did you want to open it up to any questions or comments or at all? Sure. Well, first, let us say thank you. Um, what you said, really, I think we can all definitely re relate to. And um, one of the things that really caught my attention that really kind of shook me, I guess, because it's so real, is when you said, don't let addiction be an excuse for our own behavior. And I've never really thought of it that way. And it, it really is 
solid advice that she gave us. So thank you for that very much. And we certainly don't need to tell you how much it means to hear this because you've lived it as well, but it does give us some extra encouragement and we want to need that during the holidays, especially. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. One question that we have, uh, Patrice asks, what happens on this holiday to the boundaries that we have set? Well, I guess it depends on the boundary, right? Let's just say, and I don't know what what that boundary is, Patrice, but let's just say, for example, the boundary is if you are actively using substances at, at any time, you cannot, you're not welcome in our home. And that's a very respectful and understandable boundary. If 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 that is what you're feeling, because our home is our safe haven, and it always needs to be your safe haven. If that is your boundary, and so boundaries are for us. We have to remember that they're for us. They're not for our loved ones. They're for us. And you're if you're saying if they're still using substances and it's Christmas, and they come here. Well, are they invited or, or not? Because if they're invited and you're knowing that they could potentially be having actively, you know, substances, you have to decide for yourself on that day, what are you most comfortable with? Could things potentially go sideways? Sure, for sure. Could they go positive? Absolutely. You don't know. Have that conversation with your child, though. Boundaries don't have to be those exact same boundaries all the time. They can shift depending upon the season of your life, of their life. It doesn't have to be this black and white rule 99% of the time. Yes, absolutely. You need to be firm with a boundary. If you feel that they are going to have a problem where it's going to upset yourself and the rest of the family, then maybe Christmas is not a great idea and you can meet them for lunch a day before or a day after, something like that that's more comfortable for you. But again, it's more of look at both of your options. What are you most comfortable with? And you go with that. No one can tell you what to do based on your situation or all of our situations. Most of the time, if, if someone is actively using, they're probably not gonna come. And if they do, and if they're okay, they might be a little something, but they had to use just to get through it. Love them for that moment. Love them for that moment. I hope that helps. Now that's perfect, Katie. And she did say that was her, her boundary that she touched on, so that's okay. perfect. Thank you for that. Okay, and then another comment question says, but shouldn't we consider the other people in the house? Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone, this is why it's a family disease, right? Everybody is affected. Absolutely, everybody is affected. And that's why communication, healthy communication is so important. And it's completely okay to have a conference call with your family beforehand and say, you guys, I just want to be straight up. What do you think? I'm trying to respect everybody because this is our holiday. It's not my holiday, her holiday, right? It's ours together. And we have to make a collective decision of what everyone is comfortable with. And if 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 it's one person that's saying, I don't I don't want them here. 
maybe they're not comfortable, but find out why. And it's not an accusatory thing. It's not a judge. This is this is open, healthy communication that will also improve relationships in your entire family because so much of this isn't talked about. It's whispered behind closed doors with the relatives, right? It really is. And the only ones that really know what's up is in your immediate family. And sometimes they're not even comfortable. You've got to absolutely respect everyone in the family. And it doesn't have to be a unanimous yes. It's just more of sharing and listening to others and not portraying what you think is right. When we start to get in the engagement of, of the back and forth, of the he said, she said, or, well, I want them here, or they're not going to come because you said this and you did this. And, and if they come, you better not do this, right? We've all been there. We've all done that. We can't right, pretend we haven't. But when we get into that back and forth with our relatives and even our loved ones, honestly, that is our ego. That is our ego saying, I'm right and you're wrong. And that doesn't solve anything. And that can be a, in, in all of our lives, in all of our situations and relationships, whether it comes to politics, religion, or, or really any topic, right? When we get into that banter of back and forth, taking the time to listen truly to someone's perspective. And in accepting it without judgment, accepting their feelings. It doesn't mean that they're right or they're wrong. It's truly how they feel, truly how they feel. Discussing it, and then you make a decision from there. But do that. Have a Zoom, have a call, talk with everyone in an honest and open fashion. Perfect. That's great. Okay, so here's one that you mentioned, Katie, that I don't think you talked on directly. And it is a serious question, but it's, it's a little humorous. But we've all thought it and we're still thinking it. Do we hide grandma's purse? Yes. If you think, if you feel anyone, it's just being smart, right? It's not offensive to anyone. Hide grandma's purse, hide your own purse. Yeah, absolutely. It's you're protecting yourselves and we're protecting our loved ones as well, right? Put everything in an open area or have a room that they're in and, it, and it's locked in or have them keep it in the car. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And it's and to explain it to, to family members. I know it's going to be touchy, right? Hey, listen, but it's more of hey, we don't know what's going to happen, but we just got to be honest. And uh, we're just trying to protect everybody, including our loved one. And so if you do have a purse, maybe just leave it in the car. That's comfortable for you. You don't have to make a big deal of it, just, but it's being honest. But yeah, for sure. Hide it. Good. Good. Okay, who else has a question for Katie? Anybody? Don't be shy. Now's the time to ask. We're all family here. For real. <laughs> In more ways than we we know. I would like to ask a question, although I can't seem to make a little sure. thing on the go right ahead. Go right ahead. My son's at Sober Living, and um, I have this horrible feeling of dread when he, um, when it's the holidays, especially right now, because I feel like if he's there by himself and everybody else has gone home or whatever, you know, and it's like, ugh, thinking he's sitting there alone, um, it's a struggle for me, not for anybody else in the house. It doesn't seem to be, but for me, it seems to be, you know, I just, it just stabs me in the heart. Um, and yet I don't know that I want him to spend the night here. 
because of, I mean, I, I don't really want him to spend the night here um, because of past history, you know. Yeah. So um, I guess how do you, <laughs> how do you reconcile that in your, I, I guess, is it okay to just kind of have them over for a few hours and then send them on their way, I guess is really what I'm saying. I, I mean, do you think that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's more of asking yourself, why do you feel obligated to have them spend the night? Yeah. Do you feel that that is your responsibility? I feel like he's very lonely anyway. Okay. And I, you know, he has a real hard time get, obtaining or and keeping a friend group. He just always has. He always, since long before the addiction. Yeah. And um, I always just kind of feel like, I hate the. Good. I feel I hate the thought of him sitting there by himself. Right. On well, a holiday. There's an absolutely and and sometimes coming home is perfect for just a few hours because anything more than that sometimes other emotions can come out during that time frame that may be yeah. unexpected, and and having him there if everyone if you're comfortable with that and everyone else comfortable with that that's absolutely perfectly okay. And, and another option could be maybe you and your family could each make a, a dish and bring it over to the, the, to the sober house to give the guys a meal, right? If that is, is an option and, and allowed to, to celebrate with them as well. Um, there's many things, but I do understand there's so many years where I felt so bad that either she, my daughter was in treatment or at sober living out of state and I couldn't see her. And, and, um, but most of those times I was more bothered by it than she was because there's so yeah. many, right? We, because our, we're the moms of our hearts are like, Oh my God, they're alone. And it's Christmas and we're, Oh, it's awful. It's awful. But many times, sometimes yeah. coming home um, takes them out of their structure, and and they need that structure every day. And an offset to that could be uh, not saying it would be a trigger, but but taking them out of that can could be difficult. Many times, um, it was just me. It was just me and my worries. Yeah. But, yeah. A few hours. Perfect. Or bring, having the family get together and saying, hey, we're going to bring a, be a meal for 10 guys over there. You make the cheesy potatoes. I got the ham. Right. Meet you there at two o'clock. Drop it off. OK, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Pam. Good question. Hey, Thank you. who else has a question for Katie? Anybody else? I think Katie addressed all the things we've been thinking and worrying about. She made me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Katie. We put a lot else? of we got time. For... Yeah, we Sorry, I think we, we put do. a lot of pressure on ourselves in general as as women too. to we want to make everyone happy. For the holidays, we want the table set just right. We want the perfect present for everyone, right? I know we're probably not the ones who do just get gift cards. We're looking at personalized gifts and and you know their names on on things and and things from the heart because that's what we do. That's what we do, and and it it's hard to separate some of that. And there's nothing wrong with being a loving, caring person. But when we're putting so much pressure on ourselves, um, it's a day, it's a day. And just embrace that day and the love that we have for each other and everyone around us because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. We don't know. But don't put too much pressure on it. You just love and you listen and you talk. You're right, you're right. Okay, Laura Lee has a question. Laura Lee, go right ahead.
Don't forget to unmute yourself. Hi, Lorley. Whoops. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sure can. Okay. So my son is in very active addiction and I have an autoimmune disease and I just had surgery on my foot six weeks ago and just got out of a cast. Uh -huh. So he he's actually texting me right now, fighting with me about wanting to come and stay with me at Christmas. Um, I think it's too late for him to get a COVID test and do it safely. Okay. I don't know how to handle this on any level. I I have a mom who's in long-term care, so she's high risk. I don't even know if I'll get to see her. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just feel like I'm being pulled in 50 different directions. Yeah. And I, I just don't know how to do it without causing bad feelings. He's telling me I've let him, left him to rot. He's broken. Same same old talk that we always get, I understand that. But I'm yeah. trying to keep everybody safe and I'm really struggling with, with some advice on how to do that. Right, and I understand, Lurley, and that is, I feel sometimes, no matter what the situation is, when it comes to saying no to our loved ones uh, with something that is, uh, it's hard for us to say that and it's uncomfortable to say no, no matter what it is. And, and we feel obligated to have a reason why we're saying, no, I can't because XXX. Um, and you have absolutely all the valid reasons in the world. And you're feeling, I'm guessing, potentially guilty or uncomfortable that he's not happy with your answers. And I can only guess that maybe that happens in other situations as well. And, and sometimes they will continue and continue and continue to ask the same question a hundred times over, maybe in 50 different ways until they feel that they're getting the answer that is acceptable to them. And usually that means we're sacrificing how we feel, right? Mm -hmm. Would you be comfortable just saying, son, it is not an option. I love you so much. We will try to get together either before or after. End of story. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what I have to do. He's going to he make it continue to engage. But that doesn't mean you have to. We don't have to show up to all of those back and forths. Mm -hmm. But you're going to okay. be saying it and communicating it with love. He may not like it, right? Mm -hmm. But you're saying it. You do have to protect yourself. You've got to protect. I think you said it was your mother or your mother-in-law. Yeah, my mother. I won't even get together with my brother or my sister-in-law because she's a nurse and he's a fireman. So, I mean, we're even taking them out of the loop, right? As much as it breaks my heart. Right. And, Regardless, uh, it's okay to say, son, you know I love you, kid, but it's not going to happen this year. We'll get together another time when it's safe. And if he goes back and forth, back and forth, you can say, I'm sorry that you feel that way. I love you. Goodbye. Can you hang up? You're not saying it mean. You're not saying it nasty. You're not saying it with judgment. You're being firm and you're putting up a boundary that's saying, I'm not going to engage further in this back and forth. He's an adult, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, he's, 20, he's going to be 26. He's 26. He's 26. It's okay. He knows you love him. He knows you love him. Mm -hmm. And he will accept that. But you don't have to go through the anxiety of the back and forth. It's yeah. okay. It really is. Okay. There's, there's that saying that we have to all remember, right? How removing from our own vocabularies the words I can't, right? We use that a lot. 
I can't give you money because we, right? We always feel we have to make an excuse. I can't do that or can't afford that. I can't change that to, I will not. Because you're going from the victim to a motive of power. And your power is, is saying that you're not going to allow, again, this is if someone, this is in, in, in actively using substances, you're speaking to the, the disease right now. You're saying, I will not participate in something that is not comfortable for me. Because I can do the, I can do, the, and I have done the showing up high and just accepting them as he is and stuff like that. But I can't do it with uh, the chance of no. COVID out right now. It's, it's, that's not going to be healed from if it happens to get into right. our circle. Right. Absolutely not. And I'm not saying anyone should accept if someone is showing up and they're and they're high, that everyone has a different comfort level and everyone uh, it, it, sometimes that can be completely unsafe, right? I would never mm -hmm. suggest that. But whatever we're communicating, say what you mean, mean what you say, don't say it mean. No, and I, I don't. I've, no, uh, right. Right. I've done I've done done the journey on that for the last five years. <laughs> yes. So I want yeah. you to go with love and peace in, in in your heart to know that it's really okay to just end that conversation and not do the back and forth. He may be unhappy, but your safety is number one right now. That's it. safety is number one for you and your family. Okay, Katie. Thank you. Thank you, Lorley. Okay. And we had a question from Chris that says, how did you get through your first Christmas with your addict back in your home? Right. Well, there's been a few of those. But the very first one, I did have visions of rainbows and lollipops in my head, not gonna lie. And and I thought everything would be just perfect and beautiful and wonderful and and our traditions would continue. And it, it was wonderful until the day after. And it was almost like both of us were really forcing ourselves to get through that day because we all put so many expectations on it. Looking back, it was, we were looking over our shoulders. Everyone was on high alert. Everything was tension filled. Um, always checking out of the corners of our eyes of, of, where did she go and who's she on the phone with? And she just go outside for a second and it wasn't comfortable. But it was also a lot of moments of pure joy. But I don't think we embrace that joy as we should have. We were so focused on the ball dropping. And it ruined it. Not in a verbal way, but here, right here. And what I can, again, say to you is truly, truly, if it is a first Christmas, that recovery is a journey. It's not, it's not an event. And their journey is just like our journey. It's up and down and whirlwind. And we have good days and we have bad days. And we say the perfect things. And then we've got blah that comes out of our mouth. Sometimes we don't, we don't mean it. It just happens. We're human. We're all human. They're human too. And sometimes if they're saying something or acting in a, in a certain way, we automatically think they must be using again or we're watching them like a hawk. Maybe they're just having a bad day. Maybe they're just having a, maybe they just got a bad conversation with somebody, right? It doesn't mean the worst. 
And it's okay to say, gosh, you know, are you all right there? But just embrace that moment. Don't think about tomorrow. Don't think about the what ifs and the could ifs. If they're sitting and they're in recovery and they're sitting at your table and my God, they actually got up and helped with the dishes. Take a picture, girl. <laughs> this is good stuff. It's good stuff. How do we view success? People think, oh, hey, what just wants to be successful? What, what is success? Truly, how do we view and what is our version of, of success? To some, it's it's a status or it's a how we are financially or or a degree or or whatever. But but success can be getting out of bed. Success is showing up to a doctor's appointment on time, right? These are all bits of success, and celebrating those successes is huge. I'll I'll give you an example, and this is just in in. My own life, uh, my 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 own daughter, she's been opiate free for uh, a, a long time now, and she's been on uh, medication for that. It's an injection in her stomach. It's been it's been wonderful for her, and and she's tried many many different things. And please, I'm not advocating for one or the other. I'm just this is what's worked in, in, in our family. But she was still struggling with other substances. I'm going to celebrate the fact that she's been opiate free for so long because that's huge. That's huge. And where she comes needed to get to the other substances, that's her journey, and I'm going to love and support her through that. And it's not me fixing it. It's just me saying, gosh, that really sucks. How can I help you? You want to talk about it? And if she gets nasty, then I, she knows. I'll just say I'm not going to have a conversation when you're swearing at me. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Let me hang up. She knows I love her but I'm gonna celebrate the successes and the success of her being opiate free is incredible for that amount of time. So focus on those things, the successes, how little they may be, they're huge, they're huge. That's awesome. You're so right, Katie. Thank you for sharing that and I think you've answered a lot of our questions tonight. I know you've given me a lot of new ways of looking at things because it is so easy to not celebrate the things that we, we start to take for granted. And it really does kind of help you realize that, yes, we're struggling, and but we also have to realize that our addicts are struggling too. And even small things are, you know, they're wins for them. So. Thank you. And we so appreciate you being here tonight, Katie. You brought us a lot of good information, a lot of good insight. And I think it's going to really help us all kind of to get these questions answered and to move on through the holidays and beyond because that's all information we could take well beyond the holidays. So we yeah. thank you for being here. We Thanks. really, really appreciate you taking the time. We do. Of course, Gary, this is great. I appreciate it. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Of course. Thank you.